Hello, I'm Cody with Low Range Off-Road and thank you for joining us today for another how-to video. Today we're going to talk about Suzuki Samurai 1-3 adjusting the timing. You'll need a tachometer and this just allows you to measure the RPMs of the vehicle so that way you can get it dead on instead of just listening by sound. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver to adjust the idle speed screw, 12 millimeter socket or wrench doesn't really matter, it's up to you. And a timing light. At this point, we're now going to go to the vehicle and start off there. To find the ignition timing specifications for the Samurai, you look at the vehicle emissions sticker. And right down here, it says ignition timing is 10 degrees before top dead center at 800 RPMs. Now you have plus or minus 50 RPMs, so it could be 750 or 850 and that specification is at sea level so that's crucial so if you live it's one degree for every two thousand feet so if you live at four thousand feet elevation it'd be two degrees which would be twelve degrees before top dead center at eight hundred rpms would be your specifications so our next step is to remove the timing ignition plug on the front of the bell housing of the transmission down by the back of the engine block which is just right down here It's just a simple pull out. Most of the time these are kind of corroded and bad and they may fall, they're most likely going to fall apart on you. But we supply them in stock and if you need a new one, feel free to order one up. So the next step in the ignition timing is to use the white marker, for us it's white paste, to mark the 10 degrees before top dead center on the timing marks on the flywheel, which we exposed when we removed the timing, the inspection plug cover. And to do that, we're going to throw it into fourth or fifth, or just high gear, and then kind of rock the vehicle. Okay, we just found 10 degrees before top dead center. We're going to use our white paint marker and mark it. Okay. So if you didn't see any marks on your flywheel, that's because you have an aftermarket flywheel and there aren't any marks on it. So if you do have this situation, then you will have to do your timing from the crank pulley, which is on the front of your motor, which is right down here. And then the timing marks is on the timing cover. So we are now going to find where you mark it with the white paint. And by that, you're going to stick it in high gear and then rock the vehicle as we did before. Okay, so we just found the mark and we're going to go ahead and mark that one as well. Now that we have marked it, the operation and how to check the timing and adjust the timing for the crank pulley or the flywheel is the exact same. So we are just going to go with the flywheel since that's OEM specifications. Next, we're going to hook up our timing light. Um, this is the gun that we are going to be using. It varies widely on which ones you use, but we're going to show you how to hook up this one that we have. But we have two clips, one to the positive side of the battery and one to the negative side. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up. And then you kind of want to keep the wires up away from any moving parts. And then this clip, you want to put, put on the number one spark plug wire. And we're going to put it on right up here by the distributor to keep it away from anything. Okay, and that's the time, our timing light hookup. So just put that off to the side for now. Next, we're going to attach our tachometer. And once again, it varies widely depending on which one you are using. But ours just connects to the negative side of the ignition coil or the distributor side and then a good ground as well. So we're just going to connect that now. Got to pop the cable cover off.
connect the leads. Okay, so we are now going to start the vehicle. And one thing to remember is to make sure you have your e-brake set, car in neutral, and then go ahead and start it. And then at this point, you're going to want to wait until the engine is warmed up before you can do the timing. Make sure we're in neutral still and the e-brake pulled. And then now we're going to go back to the motor and check the RPMs. Okay, so we are back at the engine compartment. Our engine is warm. And the first thing we're going to check is our tachometer. As you can see, we're floating in between 900 and 1000 RPMs. And we want to be closer in between those two marks here. In between 750 and 850. So we're going to now go ahead, use our Phillips screwdriver, and adjust the idle screw on this side of the carburetor down at the back. And as you go to twist it, counterclockwise decreases the RPM, drops it down, and clockwise increases it. So we're going to turn it to the left, drop the RPMs down to where we want it, So right about there, we're floating right around 800 RPMs, and that's where we want to be. So at this point, we're going to take our number 12 socket, or wrench, depending what you want to use. And then loosen the distributor hold-down bolt that keeps it from going side to side. And something when you loosen it, you don't want to make it too loose, or else it'll, the distributor will walk on it. So you just want it loose enough to where you can move it by hand. Okay, now we're going to use our timing light to see where cylinder number one flashes. And as I hold down the trigger, it shoots out a light. And that's every time cylinder one or sparks. So I hold it down here, look inside the bell housing to see if our timing marks are lined up. And at this point, it's not quite there. We're a little, a little advanced. So we want to reach over and then turn the distributor slightly until our 10 degrees before top dead center mark lines up with the mark on the bell housing. A little bit more. Right about there, it's 10 degrees before top dead center. And then we got to go back and check our RPMs. And it's jumped all the way up here to 900. So we got to use the idle screw on the carburetor to bring it back down close to 800. We're going to go ahead and do that at this point. Now that we're right in between 750 and 850, we, with the idle screw, we are then going to jump back over and check the timing. Okay, it's still showing that we're still 10 degrees before top dead center, so that's exactly where we want to be. We're at 800 RPM, so that's perfect. So after that point, you're going to want to use your 12 millimeter socket. Go ahead and retighten the distributor down. And after that point, you want to double check to make sure you're still 800 RPMs. We're still good there. And the timing marks once again on the flywheel. Just in case anything moves while you're tightening, tightening down the distributor. Okay, now that we have set our timing, set the idle speed screw, everything looks good, we are now going to turn up the car. So just excuse me one second. 
Okay, now that the engine is off, you feel free to disconnect any equipment you have, put any covers back on, and make sure you put the timing inspection, inspection plug back onto the bell housing of the transmission. And your timing is done at this point. So thank you for joining us at Lower Range Off-Road, and please join us next time.